Hey YouTube, it is The Real J Doll here on The Real J Doll's channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be telling you all things you need to know before going to Dubai. Cause guess who just got back from Dubai? <laughs> I just got back from Dubai two months ago and I had a blast. Me and a few friends took a girls trip out there for about a week and we really enjoyed ourselves. But if I would've watched this video before we left, we could've saved some money. Could've saved a little time, been a little more knowledgeable, you know. So I wanted to make sure I shared all the nuggets with you guys. Make sure you watch the whole video because at the end I've got some real good stuff that will help you save some money and help you save some time while you're out there in Dubai. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the video. Okay, so I've written a few notes and when I say a few, we, you know, <laughs> We've got some good stuff. So I'm gonna go pretty fast through this to make sure we cover everything and I'm not keeping you guys here too long because I know you just want the information. So first, let's start off with travel requirements. The number one thing you need when going to Dubai is da -da 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 -da, a passport. Like, come on, let's just be for real here. If you didn't know, you do need a passport to get into Dubai if you're traveling from an outside country. And before I even say that, I think one thing everybody should know is that Dubai is not a country. Dubai is a city located in the UAE. So before you tell your friends you're going to the country of Dubai, mm -mm, going to the city. At the time of today's video recording, you do not need a PCR test or vaccine to get into Dubai, but you do need to make sure that you check with the countries that you may be flying into. If you have a straight through flight to Dubai, you'll be fine, but say you have like a layover somewhere that requires it, yeah, you're gonna have to take it or find another flight. Your nationality will determine if you need a visa or not. I am an American, so I did not need a visa, but I think I've seen a few videos where some people did need a visa, so make sure you're checking on that. Check the news before you go out there. I mean, things change all the time. I don't know, maybe another virus could pop out by the time you're watching this video and then you do need some kind of vaccine to get into Dubai. So just make sure you're keeping up on all the laws and everything going on in the world before you go to Dubai. All right, so those are the requirements. Let's actually get into traveling to Dubai. You may be wondering about timing, like when's the best time to go? Dubai is hot all year. It's either hot or a hot tur. Now, based on my research, I heard that it's best to go in between October and April. This is Dubai's winter season, but around that time, it's usually like around the 70s, maybe the 80s. That's Fahrenheit, by the way. Now, when it comes to actually planning your trip, you wanna look at flights at least six months in advance to your travel. Me and my friends, <laughs> We booked our flight two months in advance of our trip. We still got a pretty decent deal, but the cheapest tickets are usually six months ahead of when you actually wanna leave. I will say that the month of, I seen that flights had dropped. We went during New Year's, so maybe, I don't know, they were trying to get more people to come there during New Year's. Like, I don't know the logic behind the prices dropping right before, but if you wanna take that chance, go ahead. You know, there are some people out here that like to spontaneously travel and book the week of, you know? I, I, I don't know how you're feeling. <laughs> but whatever airline you do decide to go through, make sure you download the app because they'll give you all the updates and help you with all the requirements that you need when traveling to your destination. As far as hotels, hotels in Dubai book up pretty fast and I wouldn't suggest trying to wait until prices drop. Um, go ahead and book your hotel early if that's what you decide to do because Dubai is a very popular destination. I've been seeing like a lot more Dubai vlogs, so I guess it's becoming more popular. Maybe that's just my algorithm because I've looked up so many things about Dubai. But even when we were trying to go, like the hotels I've seen were like slim. If you don't decide to go through the winter months, I would strongly suggest that you do not go during Ramadan. Depending on your religion, you know, you may, you know, want to go over there during that culture, but if that's not your religion, you have to think. The main religion over in Dubai is Muslim. For some reason that sounded weird coming out so maybe that wasn't the right tense to use the word but if you're going during ramadan and you want to party don't think you're gonna find any liquor anywhere over there don't think the clubs are gonna be open while you're over there so the dates for ramadan during this year are march 22nd through april 21st of 2023 i'm not really hip to ramadan in the sense of if it changes each year like the actual dates so do your research. Things to pack. You wanna make sure you're prepared. One, bring your passports, bring your cards, bring your cash. I will always recommend getting some cash out, but don't think it's a necessity. It's 2023 and everybody does electronic payments. One of my friends did not bring a card at all. She was Apple paying the whole way. Cash is good when you go to old Dubai and you're trying to negotiate prices. We'll talk about that a little later, but you can get a deal if you bring cash. Now, if you're going to like a McDonald's over there or some kind of chain establishment, don't think you're gonna bar the price down. But in your more flexible environments, use cash. 
Dubai is known for having the biggest everything, the biggest hotel in the world, the biggest man-made island in the world, the biggest building in the world, the biggest mall in the world. You're going to be doing a lot of walking, so make sure you bring comfortable shoes and comfortable clothes. If you don't do anything else in this video, please bring the correct charging adapter. I'll put it up on the screen, y'all. Our hotel did not have regular US adapters. One of my friends went to Dubai before and she said when she went, she didn't need it. She probably stayed in a more like modern hotel, but the hotel we stayed in, they did have renovations going on, but they did not take the US plugs we're used to. They had USB ports, but those weren't even the fastest. So if you do not do anything else in this video, please make sure you order this plug off Amazon and take it with you to Dubai. Take two even if you have to. You can always bring a portable charger, but this plug will get you far. And then the last thing I would suggest for things to bring are snacks. We experienced some longer layovers and then especially when you're going through other countries, food options may be kind of slim on things that you actually want to eat. So if you can, bring snacks. But here comes doing your research. Again, I keep telling you guys to do your research. Are you catching a drift here? But you have to do your research because some airports don't allow you to bring outside food in, especially during international travel. I can see that being a concern. But if you can bring snacks. Baby, I was hungry on the way home from Switzerland. They had this one little bakery in the international wing and the food was nasty. And I started to think I was having an allergic reaction, so I just didn't even eat it. Okay, we're on the roll, we've been getting through the list. Let's talk about behavior while over there. Dubai is a really safe city, but a really strict city. People have gone to jail for literally anything. Holding hands and kissing while out there. If you're on a vacation, honeymoon, anywhere with your boot thing, you might not wanna be showing too much affection over there. I think it's called like P C P D A. Try not to do too much hugging and touching while you're over there. They don't like that. You know what they also don't like? Being drunk while in public, don't be embarrassing. Dubai isn't just like a real party city anyways. Like they have nightlife, don't get me wrong. They can turn up in Dubai, like, hey, they can turn up. Here's me at one of the clubs in Dubai. Going crazy. <laughs> but for real, y'all, you could go to jail for being too drunk out in Dubai. So keep your composure, get it together and don't do too much. There were a lot of videos that I've seen floating out there about dressing modestly and you know, not showing too much skin. Over 85% of the people over there are expats, meaning they're coming there to work or they're tourists. Even though Dubai is a more holier city than like LA, it's not like the holiest of holy like Abu Dhabi. If you're going to Abu Dhabi, you need to be dressed like, come on cover your stomach. Y'all, I even had on a dress and it wasn't even like low cut for real, but he made me put back on my abaya walking around Abu Dhabi. That's how serious it was. Now, when we were walking around Dubai, like the mall and stuff, one of my friends, she had on like a corset top and she was cool, no one said anything. Um, I had on shorts, no one said anything about that. So don't let people scare you, but definitely like be cautious of that. I also heard you can go to jail for cussing. So like I said, behave yourself. Okay, so we talked about a lot. Let's get into more of the fun stuff. What are some things to do out there? One, you can go to Dubai Mall. The Dubai Mall has plenty of things to do there. You can literally spend a whole day there and not cover the whole mall. The mall has a lot of stores. They have like two museums in there. They have an aquarium in there. They have an ice skating rink in there. You can go outside, watch the water fountain show at nighttime. They also have the Burj Khalifa, which is the tallest building in the world. Like they have a lot to do in the mall. You can go to Atlantis and they have a lot of other water parks over there. You can go skydiving. Now I really wanted to do that. Like that seems like such a fun experience. Several beaches. They even have like a kite beach, which looks so dope. We went to a regular public beach. Um, I'll pop the name in. Don't remember right now, but it was nice. Crowded, but nice. You can ride a hot air balloon in the desert. You could also ride camels in the desert. You can go to the museum of the future. Make sure you book this three weeks in advance. Me and my friends literally try to book it three weeks in advance, like the day starting that third week in advance. And it was booked until the day after we were leaving Dubai. We even tried to go inside while we were there because we were going on New Year's and we were hoping some people were drunk and would come. The lady said they're booked for the day. She can't do anything for us. They are booked and busy. You can do a boat or a yacht ride. You can ride jet skis. Those like are super cool. They have the jet skis over there that look like actual cars. It's pretty dope. 
You can visit the Palm Jumeirah. Here's a picture of me and my friends. It was such a gorgeous view. Love being up there. That was something that we didn't plan on doing, but we added to our itinerary while we were there, and I'm so glad we went. Global Village, that was dope. You can literally spend a whole day there. Go there if you're into like learning about other cultures and trying different cuisines. It's definitely a place to go when you go to Dubai. Miracle Garden, that was so beautiful. It's like a huge botanical garden, probably the biggest in the world. I wouldn't doubt it, it's Dubai. And then you could also go to Abu Dhabi, visit a mosque, really nice, really religious, very educational, make sure you do it. So we made it to the tips and tricks section. That's the last section of the video. One, if you made it here, you're super, super dope. Go ahead and subscribe because I want you here and you clearly want to be here. Two, make sure you watch my actual Dubai vlog after this video. You can click it now, save it for later. It'll also be at the end of the video at the end slide. And number three, I don't know. But let's go ahead and get into it. The sun's on my hair. Like, I'm only working with a little bit of daylight here, so I need to hurry up. All right, y'all. All right, all right, all right. I'm about to get into the goods. Number one, I would suggest that you go to the store and grab you a pack of water. If your hotel doesn't offer them for free. I'm saying this because it's gonna be super hot there. You wanna make sure you keep cold water on you. And if you can, before you go, like buy one of those like tumbler type bottles so that way your water will stay cool all day. Also, when you go to restaurants, you're buying water every time. And when I say you're buying water every time, you're not buying a glass. You're buying like one little, I, I don't know if this is a pint. You're buying like one glass for the whole table. You guys gotta, gotta split it every time. Yeah. So buy some water, take it with you. Number two, I would not suggest planning out your entire trip before you go. Now you can plan like the order operations, what you wanna do each day, but I wouldn't actually book most things until you get there. This is specifically for excursions though, excluding the Museum of the Future. Book that as soon as you know you're going to Dubai. But I say this today, there's plenty of opportunity for you to book things when you get to Dubai. They're gonna be at the airport, they're gonna be at the concierge of your hotel, surrounding hotels that you may go through, and you're gonna get a great deal while you're there. You'll also know exactly what you're gonna do. So most of our trip, we booked ahead of time on Viator, but when you book through a third party site, you can't like change anything when you get there, you can't make any adjustments nothing and to some people it may be a relief to book everything before so that way you don't have to play around with anything when you get there but you can save some money by booking things when you get there or find some even cooler opportunities that you didn't even think about before you even got over there number three i do not recommend renting a car take a taxi take a taxi take a taxi you can also do ubers while you're over there those are a little bit more pricey and then there's also something called kareem and that's another like Uber type app. Taxis are cheaper. Take a taxi, a real taxi that actually has like the taxi thing on top and your fare is gonna be much cheaper in between locations. If you didn't know, there's also an option on Uber to split the price of Ubers so that one person doesn't have to pay every time. Tipping is not a thing over there. If you tip, you're just being super, super nice. But at restaurants, taxi drivers, like, that's really not a thing. Maybe the concierge or maybe like the bellman at the hotel if they're doing great service, but it's not a thing there, so don't put too much pressure behind it. I also don't recommend driving over there because they drive crazy, and I don't understand how like there were zero accidents while we were over there, but taxi drivers are riding on each other's tails, cutting each other off, like bumper to bumper traffic. You also don't know all the rules over there, and if you get pulled over, go to jail, get a fine, like anything, you just, don't even want to play with it. Number four, when you're in the markets or like old Dubai area, never, ever, ever take the first price they give you. Make sure you negotiate that price. They throw out the first price to see what you're going to do with it, but you know something because I told you. When I was over there, guys, I wanted to buy a scarf before me and my friends went to the desert next day. We were in the souk, so I think we were in the fabric souk. This guy tried to sell me a scarf for $95. He tried to sell me this scarf for $95. And guess how much I got it down to? 25, okay. <laughs> I was not about to pay $95 for a scarf with a couple of rhinestones on it. Needless to say, if you want something, you can get it for whatever price you wanna pay for it. Number five, there is a line to wait for taxis at the mall. So when you're trying to leave the mall and you see all these taxis driving past you and they're all giving you this like little signal, they're going to the taxi like pickup area to pick people up at. If they stop and pick somebody up that's not waiting in line, they can get fined for that. That's what I'm telling y'all, Dubai does not play. Number six, download this app right here. I still had it downloaded on my phone so I could tell you guys. Download this app right here, Talibot. It's literally like Uber Eats 
and shipped maybe combined but you can get groceries and fast food delivered to your hotel or airbnb if you decide to go that way the delivery fee isn't that bad and they get the food to you pretty fast i promise it'll save you a lot the night that we got there, we got there super late and we ordered Televot because our Uber driver wasn't trying to stop anywhere to get us anything to eat. Crazy. Number six, they do not split checks when you go. So if you're going with a group and you all are sitting at one table, all your items are gonna be on one check. You're gonna have to do the math to get everybody's individual split. So if you guys need to split your food and you're going somewhere where they serve drinks, make sure you do this before you eat. If you guys mess up the pricing, that's all y'all. And one thing about the nicer restaurants, the service is not up to par. You're not rude, but they're not as serving as servers over here. You have to keep calling them when you want something new, searching for them, trying to hunt them down just so you can get a refill of water, add something to your order, something's not right. They're not checking on you, asking how everything was. Well, one time they did, they did. But it's just like, not like you would think. So the food over there, especially at the nicer restaurants, is already expensive, so that's where their tip comes into play. Like I said, tipping is not a thing over there, so don't try and do too much. Eight, take the Metro when you can. I heard it's pretty cheap. I think around like $5. I don't remember if that's USD or AED, but I think it's around $5, and that's for like the Silver Pass, which is like economy flight, and then you have like a Gold Pass that's maybe like $10 and that's more like what business class or first class and you can use the metro to travel around all around like central downtown dubai i also heard it was nice to get a hotel that's like close to the metro that way your transportation around is easier which is smart our hotel was like off down by the ports we stayed at the queen elizabeth II hotel which was very very nice i do have footage that i could do a hotel review on but I don't know if I wanna do that. So if you guys wanna see it, let me know. Our hotel was dope and it had a club on top, Club Float. Make sure y'all check it out because it was lit. If you wanna save a coin and you're going like on a girl's trip, they do have like ladies days and ladies nights at beach clubs. Almost like happy hour, but for girls and all day. And then number 10, I would definitely not plan more than two events each day. Once you start adding three, four things in to do in a day, you're, it's probably not gonna get done. Between the line, wait time, travel distance, like the actual distance to do the excursion or like tour the spot, it's gonna take some time. So I definitely will only plan like two things per day. I really hope you all enjoy. Make sure you stick around to the end screen so you can actually watch the vlog, subscribe to my channel, or watch another recommended video on my channel. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.